from ARUP Laboratories on the campus of the University of Utah. Welcome to the Lab Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Jackson. It is Thursday, the 27th of June, 2024. Today's Lab Mind interview guest is a Zoomer. If you do not know what a Zoomer is, or perhaps if you've heard the term but can't recall what it means, then please keep listening and you will soon find out. Our guest, Isaac Schmidley, is a medical laboratory scientist from Christus Health in Cachada, Louisiana. Isaac gave a presentation at the recent 2024 Executive War College describing his career journey as a Zoomer laboratory professional and explaining what clinical laboratory leaders need to know about people in his demographic cohort. Isaac has a bachelor's degree in medical laboratory science from LSU Health Shreveport and is currently studying toward a master's degree in public health. Isaac Schmidley, welcome to LabMind. Hello. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Isaac, what is a Zoomer? What does the word Zoomer mean? The traditional definition of a Zoomer is really a generation that's born between the late 1990s and the early 21st century. And when I talk about Zoomers, I'm really referring to younger generations in general, especially those who are still in high school or have recently graduated and are now entering their early years of college. So you're fairly young then. Can I ask you how old you are? I'm currently 16 and I'll turn 17 next month, actually. A happy birthday in advance. <laughs> so you finished up your schooling pretty early to finish up a bachelor's degree by age 16. What was it in your background that both motivate you and allow you to get through school so quickly? It all begins with my parents. After they got married, they moved to China and they had me there. Mandarin was actually my first language and I even attended preschool in China. When we moved back to America, my parents enrolled my younger brother and I in the American public school system and knew the English language, but I had some more technical difficulties transitioning it from my secondary communication, which I usually just spoke to my parents when I was in China, to just speaking English to everyone when I was in America. Uh, and I had a particularly tough time working with the written element of English. I think that was very difficult for me. And my mother began to realize that I was having some challenges with linguistics. And so she decided to pull my brother and I out of school and sacrificed her own career and education to give my brother and I the opportunity to be homeschooled and have a new way to learn and engage in a different education system. So it sounds like that gave you the opportunity to have sort of a customized curriculum. But I can also imagine that not all homeschoolers finish up a college degree by age 16. So was there something in particular that motivated you? The way that my, my mother approached teaching my siblings and I, she, of course, taught us the fundamentals that we needed to know throughout life. English, math, science, you know, all those things. But she also allowed us to explore and learn what we really wanted to learn. And I think having the opportunity to learn things that weren't exactly in a set curriculum really inspired uh, a great desire to fully learn. And that desire to learn, it really drove me to advance far beyond what traditionally people my age would because I just really enjoyed learning. I completed my entire high school curriculum for everything that my mom had planned to teach me at a young age. And then my parents were looking for different opportunities, such as looking at community colleges. And they asked me if I wanted to take any classes in a local community college. And I said, yes, absolutely. I really enjoy learning. So of all college majors to pursue, you pick medical laboratory science. What drove your interest in the medical field? Yeah, well, I think there were a couple of things. Early on in my life, I really developed a passion for learning math in particular, and I really wanted to choose a career that would advance my math education, and I thought that this career would be a great career for that. And I also have two younger non-ambulatory siblings. Seeing their struggles through life, it really inspired me to choose a, a career that would help people like them and their struggles and challenges to live a better life, really, and to have support that everyone needs, but that people who have those challenges need especially. So really having those younger siblings and taking care of them, it really inspired me to choose a career in healthcare. And so I think that a love for math and that passion for, for healthcare 
combined, it really inspired me to choose that career in medical lab science. But I honestly haven't even heard about medical lab science until one time after class and I saw a poster on the wall and it was advertising the medical lab science program. And so I looked into that and I really was interested in pursuing that. And uh, that was really the catalyst that got me to pursue this career. Yeah, I guess it shouldn't be surprising. If we did a national survey and asked 300 million Americans how many had heard about medical laboratory science or could answer a question about what it was, what fraction do you think would have a good answer to that? I would say less than 5%, really. I think this is not a very well-known field, and it's really quite a shame because I've really enjoyed working in this field. And so I am sure a lot of other people would, too, if they simply knew about it. A lot of people who go into healthcare careers have siblings or parents that were in healthcare as well. Did you have any other family influences that paved the way for you? My grandmother, actually, she was a nurse and she's been a nurse for several decades now. I wouldn't necessarily say that was what inspired me. It was interesting, though, because after I started pursuing the MLS program, my dad, actually, he decided to apply for nursing school. And he's now a, a registered nurse and is practicing as well. And so I think that's really interesting. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to have a healthcare oriented family that he felt motivated to go back to school and learn what he could as well. So maybe your dad was motivated by you and watching your pathway. I think that's certainly a, a very real possibility. And seeing a lot of the aftermath of COVID, that also really inspired him to choose to switch careers. He was a, an educator before he started his nursing journey. So the MLS program where you were studying, had they ever had a student as young as you or, or let's face it, anywhere close to as young as you? Well, as far as I know, I'm the youngest ever graduate of that school, but that might change in the future. So not really sure moving forward, but as far as I know, I am still the youngest graduate. And did that create any challenges? Were they concerned about that? There certainly were some major challenges, but they came really more from the systems that were in place as I was going through the MLS school rather than any particular person or organization. The first major obstacle that I ran into was that only one hospital would let me do my clinical internships there. And so for my last semester, I was only able to get all of my like, real clinical practice in at, at one hospital while all my peers were going to different hospitals and really having a more diverse learning experience in, in that way. But thankfully, the hospital that let me train, it was a, a level one trauma center. So I definitely got a lot of experience working from there anyways. And there was one other major hiccup that occurred during my last semester as I was applying to get my state certification on the application portal. It didn't let me put in my real age because I was too young. You know, thankfully, I was able to call them and they were able to get it fixed really quickly. I still remember being quite frustrated about that situation during that time. But now looking back, I, I just think it's, it's kind of funny more than anything else. So those were a couple of hiccups, but there weren't any real major challenges, I think, that really impeded my learning experience. So as far as you know, there aren't any regulations or legal barriers to a 16-year-old being in the laboratory. No, as far as I know, and I have looked through the legal documents with state, you know, local, federal laws, and I did not find anything at all preventing minors from specifically working in, in the lab or in the hospital setting. So it sounded like you had to advocate for yourself in this process because clearly this pathway was not laid out in a way that was expecting someone like you to come along. There were some things that I really didn't expect that I would have to do, but I ended up doing them anyways because I really wanted this to be my career and that determination with that, I was able to take all the necessary steps and talk to the people that I needed to really get this done and get on with obtaining that career certification and uh, working in the lab. So tell us a little bit about the transition from being a student into actually having a regular job. 
how did that feel? In particular, the social aspect of it. It's one thing to have fellow students that you might see in class or study with, but the coworker relationships may be a little bit different. How did they treat you when you showed up? I think I felt really quite included in that position and in my current lab role. I honestly couldn't ask for a better group of coworkers. They're very kind to me, but they also have reasonably high expectations because I am doing really an adult job and that there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And so they expect me to do what I need to do to do this job successfully, but they also treat me with kindness and empathy. And I'm really thankful for that. So you made this decision to go into medical laboratory science a couple of years ago. How do you feel about that decision right now? It's really one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. I really was able to grow and learn a lot throughout the course of my training and preparing for this career and also throughout my job and current position. I think I've learned a lot of things. One of the things that I really didn't expect to learn in a field that I wouldn't expect to be reaching out to patients so much was communication because I had to communicate with my coworkers, the other lab staff, and calling doctors and nurses to report critical values. And so I think it helped me build a lot of important life skills. And I'm really glad I made that decision to pursue this career. So anytime we talk about careers, I think it's really important to think about the role of mentors and role models. Who have been some of your most important mentors and role models along this career journey of yours? Two great role models come to mind immediately. My program director during my time through the medical lab science school, her name was Dr. Blackburn, and her classes were some of the hardest classes that I had ever taken in my life. And I was really able to learn a lot from what she taught me. And it allowed me to grow and learn a lot more than I think I would have without her presence and her effort to help teach students. And so I think one of the the biggest things that she's taught me is about dedication in my study. And even when when times get tough, you still have to push forward and and keep moving on to achieve uh, your goals and, and do the tough things in life. Another person that was really a huge inspiration for me is um, my lab manager, Miss Nancy. She really taught me a lot about lab stewardship and how to effectively run and manage a lab. And so I think there are a lot of great life skills from learning from her as well. So there are a lot of stereotypes out there about young people. And the definition of young people is probably anyone who's younger than you are. But even going back to the ancient Greeks, there's a quote out there that I can't remember exactly who it was from, but something to the effect of young people these days, they're irresponsible, you can't trust them. But the way the quote is worded, it sounds exactly like someone's saying it today. So I think these stereotypes have always been out there. None of these classic stereotypes about young people just wanting to have fun, not being independent, being helicopter parented, they don't seem to be true about you. And maybe they're not as true in general of your generation as people think they are. But what do you think is true about Gen Z? Are there any generalizations that might be fair to make? What have been your observations about your generation? I think there are some differences in how Gen Z see the world as compared to previous generations. And several of these differences in worldview are really important to consider for the purposes of recruitment and trying to get young people engaged with this field. I think one of the major things that Gen Z are really skeptical about nowadays is the necessity of even having college careers at all. I know my parents and grandparents would say that you really need to get college education if you want to be successful in life. But I think now many Gen Z are questioning that and wondering if there are other ways to be successful. And there's this sort of new definition of success that has emerged from this generation. Most Gen Z, as they are going through their high school and college, they're looking for a career path that can lead to making $100,000 or more a year. And I think that's certainly very important for considering the recruitment and offering different sort of 
ways to advance their career, even after receiving their initial medical lab science degree. And, and they're also very transparent about finances too. So they want to know the details about the money. It's one of the first and foremost things that they want to know about before deciding to pursue any career at all. And one other major area that I think Gen Z are probably a little bit more aware of than maybe some of the previous generations is the importance of mental health and mental well-being. Many Gen Z are concerned about the stress and the emotional impact of the different jobs might bring. And I think this is a really important area where the advantages of an MLS career path can really shine through. Really, some of the major influences in my decision to pursue this career was the fact that it was a full bachelor's degree, but it also came with an immediate career certification. And so for me, it was worth taking that time and studying and working throughout those years for a certification that allows me to work at any hospital and allowing me to have this well-paying job and a really good foundation for other careers that I wanted to pursue in the future. I think that it really has been a great fit for me. So thinking about the employer side of this for a moment, if there's anyone listening who's a laboratory manager who has positions to fill, you mentioned financial transparency. And I wonder if something as simple as putting the salary ranges in a job posting might be something that would be advantageous to Gen Z. It always surprises me that some employers don't put those in. But are there other things that you would recommend that the employers think about in terms of successfully attracting and recruiting young people into these kinds of careers? You mentioned the salaries and the hourly ranges and whatnot. You can even go a step further than that and put it on direct-to-consumer advertising and just putting that out there hey, you can pursue this career and this degree, and this is what you will be making. Even to people who might not already be looking or interested in this career, but just to people who don't even know about it. And I think that sending that message out there can be very, very beneficial to recruiting and attracting that younger talent. So you talked about some of the hurdles that you ran into during your student time, getting placements for your clinical rotations. But what about when you actually graduated and started looking for a job? Was that challenging to find someplace that would hire you when they knew how old you were? At first, I thought it was actually going to be a really simple process because that hospital that I did do my rotations at, I had already reached out to several managers of various different departments and I was trying to work something out and I thought it was going to be really smooth sailing. But, you know, when I actually put the application in, the system automatically rejected my application because I was not old enough. And so I was trying to get in touch with, with the managers to let them know about the problem. And they said that they were working on it as they were trying to resolve that issue. I thought it'd be a good idea to apply for some other positions at other labs and, and other hospitals, just in case that didn't work out. And so I reached out to various different hospitals near where I was going to school and even places as far as an hour and a half away because I was really desperate and trying to get a job. And some of the websites and applications that I turned in, they would automatically reject my applications because of my age. And others, I was able to land a face-to-face -face interview. I actually remember there was one interview I went to I applied for the position and they said that they were open to doing an interview. I drove about an hour and a half from where I live and they said that they couldn't hire me uh, almost immediately as I was there in person. And so after that, I was feeling really quite disappointed. I thought that I might have to delay starting my career two more years. I really did not want to do that. But there was one more application opened up in my hometown at a local hospital there. And I applied for that position and we did the interview. They called me back. They said that they were ready to hire me and I was going through everything. And it was actually at the drug screen when they said that I needed to have a parent there because I was underage. And then that led to a series of events where <laughs> for whatever reason, one department knew about my age and one didn't. And so they had to resend my letter. And then I, I really hit rock bottom at that point. But eventually I called them. I let them know about different state, local, federal laws, telling them that I could work even under 18. And eventually they did call me back and they said that they were willing to hire me. And after going through all those ups and downs, I was 
finally able to land a, a position and I started my job at the hospital, which is where I still work now. So Isaac, where do you see yourself going long-term with all this? Well, currently I'm working on my master's degree in public health from the same school that I finished my medical lab science degree. And I just finished my second semester. And after I graduate from that program, I really don't know where to go after that. I have considered maybe preparing for the MCAT and going into medical school. I have looked into some PhD programs as well, and I'm still really not quite sure what I want to do. And I've also seen some other ways to advance my current lab career, either a, a master's degree in medical lab science or even a doctorate degree in medical lab science. And so I think there are a lot of options and I'm not really quite sure what I want to do yet, but I'm definitely going to keep all doors open and see how it plays out. Well, there's certainly lots of time and there's no hurry for you to track switch or anything else at this point. So Isaac Schmidley, thank you so much for sharing your personal story. And I hope that you've inspired some of the folks listening to take initiative in their lives, to not let barriers stand in their way of reaching their goals and look forward to hearing where you go with your career. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm glad I could put my thoughts and share my story with uh, everyone who's listening here. LabMind is sponsored by ARUP Laboratories, a not-for-profit enterprise of the University of Utah and its Department of Pathology. Our producer is Sheree Peterson with audio engineering by Isaac Acosta Alvarez. You can also find other LabMind episodes at arup.utah.edu, along with an extensive video lecture library providing free CME and CE credits for medical and laboratory professionals. Subscribe to LabMind on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your other favorite podcast app. And please leave a rating and review in order to help others find the podcast.